Microsoft, this is our 50th year. We have been in this country for almost 38 years. And out of that, 26 years with the engineering team. And we have been very shy about talking, it, talking about the engineering. So today, I'm going to break that and publicly talk about all the good work we do in India. I, myself, is an engineer, 32 years in Microsoft. Half the time in US, I came back to India about 2005, been here for last almost 20, 20 years. So if you look at how we started, it was 1998. We started in India, in Hyderabad. We built a campus 2007. We got a pretty big, sprawling campus in Hyderabad, 55 acres. Almost it feels like being in Redmond, because if you are in the building, you can't make out the difference, whether you are there or here, except you get chai and samosa in the evening. So it's better here. So, and then we, of course, we expanded to Bangalore. We start, started Noida Center a few years back, right up before COVID. And then we have Pune also. So we have four different sites across the full spectrum of the country. If you look at the presence of Microsoft as a whole, this is the Satya's direct reports, by the way. This is the leadership team of Microsoft. Almost every team, engineering, research, MCAFs, SILA, our, our, our like HR, all those have presence in this country, actually. So in that sense, Microsoft, India is a microcosm of Microsoft. And in fact, some of the execs actually started calling India the Microsoft East versus Microsoft West. So that's because we have a complete, all the, all the divisions. And that's why we can do things that we have never been able to do together. And that's something I want to talk about. The reason I'm here to talk is to talk about how we can work together to help India build solutions that are world class and solve planet scale uh, problems. If you look at the products that we build in India, almost every product that Microsoft ships for the world has a stamp from India. Talking about Make in India, we have, whether it's Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or it's Teams, or it's SharePoint, or it is Azure Cloud, or it's LLM, every piece of technology has an imprint of India in that, in that software, by the way. And that is something I'm proud of. Last few years, we have been, last two years, we have been very busy working on Copilot. So if you have used Copilot in Teams or Word, Excel Point, any, anywhere, there is a team in India, either Bangalore or Hyderabad or Noida, that has built that product, actually. So what's so special about Copilot? So I wanted to just talk about this new technology just to motivate how I believe India can accelerate with the new technology, which is the Gen AI or generative AI. I have been in the industry for almost 35 years, but I've, I'll tell you, I've never seen any technology that is more profound, deep, and transformational. Almost everything we have to rethink, we have to relearn, actually. So let me, I'll get to what are the key characteristics, but I'll tell you why I feel India really needs to ride this wave. If you look at the history of human mankind, the growth of GDP or prosperity was always on the back of some technology. Well, right from the printing machine to steam engine to electricity to silicon, the, the, the computers, the cloud, everything, that's the graph of GDP. Nothing happened if there was no technology in the first, you can look at like 1,000 years. Right now, I think we are at the cusp of a beginning of a new technology called generative AI. And I think India should just ride that for the next level of GDP growth for this country. So why is this special as an engineering person? What is special is this is the first time technology is such that it understands us. So far, if we build a software, we have to teach somebody to use the software. Now it's not, the, not true, because you can actually build interface which is very natural. You can actually have uh, any language, like it basically breaks the barrier of language. It breaks the barrier of skill gap because you can do it in a way that is very natural to human being because, because computer understands us now. That's, that's number one. Now number two difference is we don't need to teach intelligence, it already is intelligence. Those who are in, from the engineering background, we used to write code that ran, ran on CPU. Now, this intelligence runs on GPU. 
you don't need to write code. All you need to do is coax to it to do the right thing for you. Because it is a reasoning engine, it is a logic. And the third is that it will have infinite or unlimited memory by end of this year. In the sense that you can build a solution that will learn you over time. If you build a solution for a farmer, it will understand that farmer over years and years, and then the, the software can actually help them in a more natural, because it will understand Rajiv, how I work, what language I use, what I mean when I say something. And that is just transformative. We have been actually uh, working on this co-pilot, as I said. And Microsoft thinks about this generative AI in three layers. One is the co-pilot apps, then co-pilot stack, so you can build your custom solution, and then co-pilot devices. We have engineering team for all these layers, so I wanted to just say that. And as a result of that engineering team, we actually have been working with the judiciary system some uh, folks in, in the capital to help build a judiciary co-pilot. Because one of the challenges I hear is one of the big challenges to find relevant cases for a particular case. What this co-pilot can do is find you, what would take you weeks or months to go find the right pages in the right book, actually they, you can get it in like minutes. Because the co-pilot is aware, we are digitizing all the cases of the past and then people can use the co-pilot too. So that's the kind of work we are doing already. We have also worked, because I'm from Hyderabad, I, 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 I live in this Sabrabad, so I remember talking to the commissioner of police there, and he was saying, you know, Rajiv, before COVID, 80, 70% of crime was physical. After COVID, 70% is digital, and we have no way to track them and prosecute them. Now we have built an OS, a, a digital crime operating system, where they can now uh, investigate 100% of the, of the cases now. So that's something we are working. So my point is, we can actually work together, and I want to encourage you to think about how can we work together from the engineering side. What gives me hope, if I look at this country last 10 years, what we have done is just phenomenal in terms of leveraging technology, whether it's UPI, Digi Yatra. I have lived in US for two decades. The system of transaction here is 100 times better than in, in US. That's because, as, as really, we have really nailed it. Yesterday, we were with Nilankani, and he said, Satya, we can actually leverage AI. You know why? Because we have learned how to use technology to build planet scale or population scale solution that is affordable and easy to use and works on devices that our citizens have in this country. And that gives me a lot of hope, actually. With that hope, what I want to do is just share my thoughts on the different AI scenarios what I want to encourage you is that think about your department. How can AI, what are your hard problems? Think about that. How can AI, and then let's work together, how can AI help solve that complex problem? Because AI will make it simple is what we believe. As Satya always says, everything will be reimagined in, the, in this era of AI. Everything can be rethought and simplified. So my, my, my ask to you is, reach out to us, and we would be happy to work with you to help build solutions that solves the challenges of your department. With that, I'm going to say thank you so much.